then I lived in London and then I lived in India. So in my spiritual teachings, I very much bring in the Egyptian, the Indian Vedantic uh, knowledge and the, and the Western, uh, you know, Jesus and all the rest of it. So it's a nice mixture. Especially during the full moon, and the, it's important to to honor the moon and the the celestial brothers and sisters out there. And through fire, which is an element which is akin to our electricity, we we do a lot of purging. So what I've done is uh, uh, go to different places and just take the elements north, east, south, and west, and create energy and do what the called a sipapu, which is like a four-hour, or actually it should be four days and four nights for real purification, like a vision quest, where, where a person stands their ground and like Buddha under the Bodhi tree, refuses to do anything except think about God, and even refuses drinking and eating. That's the vision quest of the Native Americans. But to, And a fire is going while this is happening? Well, no, not with the vision quest. There you just sort of sit and meditate and you just think about God constantly. That's all you can do. But with the fire... The idea is the fire is connecting with the elements down the center of the earth and like a beacon to the light, and you just keep going around and doing this like an ancient shamanistic practice of just being connected to that element. Or like with water, people in, in nature, uh, they go to the sea, they see Kumanja, they honor the, the water as another element, we're 80% water. So uh, the fi what I'm doing is, um, you know, we go to Sedona, Arizona for our energy vortex, or we say, oh, got to go there and find... But energy is energy, and it's always around us, and it sort of works in a spiral. So we can take any ground, really, and make it sacred with prayer. Prayer, that's why people go to church, and they like ha having a habit and ritual, because it creates a vibration and sets a motion. And when you prove fidelity, and you keep working a project, then, then the angels and spirit and God and, and humans say, wow, look, he built a pyramid, he built a temple. They did something. They could depend upon it. It's reliable. So um, that, that's it. The moon is reliable. Know. The sun rises reliably. That is a constant. Space is constant. So when we meditate, we're in constant. We go into that constance because we as humans are always running very quickly with lots of energy. But when we step into the, the constance of the universe, we, we ground ourselves and we get connected to source, which is love. Right. So now, Rashmi, based on your experience, because I know you've, you've also dealt with cancer. Yes, but that's right. But before <clears throat> we go into that, I want to keep it also on this level of the more esoteric practices. Um, what do you think the resurrection is of Jesus? Do you believe that happened? Because some Christians take it on faith, faith only, because being part of their religious institutions, they've only been given enough knowledge to where it could be faith, but there's no science behind it. For, well, most, um, for most Christians. It's interesting you asked me this question. When I was 19, I went to Kashmir with my father, and we went to Srinagar, and I went to this special place where there's a grave, and I felt a very In powerful energy Rosalie, there, and, and it was the grave of Jesus, and I really felt it was. And, you know, you, there are many books that have been channeled and written about his years after the resurrection, uh, where he spent many years in India with Babaji. And Babaji was the teacher of Jesus and Moses and Elijah because he is the Christ yogi and he's eternally around uh, right. uh, for a long there's, time. I've been to that too. Right. And did did you feel the energy? There's controversy about it. The energy yeah. I could feel probably three blocks away. It right. was, who, whoever it was, yes. I don't know. And I think there's actually two saints yes. that are buried there. Yes. Uh, and because Kashmir has such difficult political situation, there's uh, very few people. Like If that spot was in India, it would be just packed with thousands and thousands of people. We but consider Kashmir part of India, by the way. No, well, I know, yeah, you, I know, I know but, you do, but they but, don't. But, yeah. but it's, um, well, yeah. it's, yeah. you know, it's really yeah. tough yeah. up there. It's they it's don't have any electricity it's most it's of the day. And so as a result, I had the whole place to myself. Wow. I could meditate there for hours. Plus fun. I know somebody who has access to the keys, and, and uh, wow. they, they locked it down because somebody from Switzerland wanted to come in and dig up the grave just to do a DNA sample right. to see it with if it matched with some other saint in Pakistan which means that at this uh, tradition where 
saints when they die they take their body and bury them in we different, do different samadhi. parts we do some well no they take yeah. a toe over here yeah, and a finger true. over there and like francis you know. xavier yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe and yeah. and i know none of that stuff made any sense to me i wasn't interested in anything like that it seemed all icky and weird but uh, i studied with a master in the south of india who started to call my attention to things that i had never thought about in spiritual practice he he talked about religious abuse, and by religious abuse he meant that uh, many people doing practices from India, taught by masters, were taught incompletely, either because the master didn't trust them, that they were ready for the higher teachings, or because uh, the master was a little selfish and right. didn't want to share, yes. you know. Yeah. But, but in any case, what do you think about the resurrection? Do you think it's possible for, like they take Qigong masters that can take a fish that's so dead in the marketplace that the eyes are cloudy and put the qi in and the fish comes alive? I very much uh, have total faith in that phenomenon. That, that can be done? Yes, definitely. And you know, there's been so many books written about people that have died uh, and the doctors have seen this and then come back again, and it's been a total miracle. Right. They've been dead, you know, clinically for minutes or even right. hours sometimes. Right. Right. And sometimes people are, you know, getting ready for the cremation or whatever the ceremonies are, and suddenly the person pops <laughs> back. And this is stories that people... Pops back. Yeah, you know, and you're like, oh, my God, is it you or a ghost or what? <laughs> but right, it happens right, all right. the time. And uh, Jesus was, you know, in that moment when he be got resurrected, that was the a great initiation. And that's when Jesus, the man, the human, became Christ consciousness. And Christ, Christ is not a person. Christ is, as we know, yeah, unity consciousness. I, I, in a I sense. know, I know all of that, the abstract about about Christ. But <clears throat> if you look at the Shroud of Turin, the Shroud of Turin indicates a body that was so beat up. I mean, they. I saw yes. one documentary where uh, a medical doctor working at the emergency ward, ward in L.A. was looking at it kind of like he was looking at an x-ray right. and he said this person could have died from any number of these injuries yes so he had all of them oh, on piercings and blood and you know it was so bad. so i think for a body that was that mutilated or that that abused the resurrection uh must have been pretty pretty amazing it uh, you know he was in a scene as as you you know probably and the essenes were masters with herbs they were masters with healing in very natural and miraculous ways. And they, 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 did, they did a lot of healing on him with the herbs and so on. So, so it took a while, you know. I don't think he just suddenly popped up as they, uh, you know. So, so, you, so you think that... Um, to to that recuperate. He, that, that he did go through this abuse of the crucifixion. Oh, definitely. And then he resurrected and then lived out his life in Kashmir. Uh, he, he, went, uh, he went to the east. And he traveled. He took the teachings all over. I very much believe that he um, married Mary Magdalene, that had children, and that's how the Christ yeah. uh, seed has, has come down the line. Right. And the, the, the Christian church has taken all of that out because they wanted the male domination in the last 2,000 yeah. years on this planet. No, I, I'm familiar with a lot of those thoughts, but I'm kind of at this point in my life where I'm sort, sort of throwing everything out yes, yes. and starting from uh, what actually makes sense to me. And scientifically, what, you mean? Not only scientifically, well, yeah, for sure. And I logically? Mean, I, I think, it, well, it's, let's put it this way. The Shroud of Turin shows one body that went through huge abuse and apparently in some kind of explosion of light was able to leave a record. It, there's no indication it's Jesus. Yeah. But, and I don't really actually care, but I do care if somebody could do it, because if somebody can do it, then it means other people could That's do it, right. if they wanted to go through such a horrific exercise, which I don't think is for just everybody, and I don't think longevity of Leonard Orr, that last, that's necessary, now we're going to do the crucifixion. Last year with Leonard, I was in India, and we were at what I call the Immortal Tea Party, and we were in this amazing forest in Sariska doing fire purification. But what we were really doing was we were at the ashram of Patruji. Now, Patruji is 2,000 year old, immortal. And there are 13 different samadhis, you know, because a great being is put into, not cremated in India, we put them into samadhi, which means like a, a burial right. uh, in yogic position. And there are 13 of these, one next to the other. And every 800 years, he just bursts out of the concrete, walks around, and then, you know, has another samadhi because he goes down again for a while. 
and and meanwhile he's an immortal moving around and uh, we met the pujari there he's a great friend of mine we helped him a lot and and people uh, and i had actually um, uh, you know psychic uh, visions of mm -hmm. about Raji, but we were chasing around in very hot temperatures looking for him as well in the different uh, parts of the, of the forest. So now I'd like to interject yeah. something about the uh, scientific thing regarding uh, Jesus and the resurrection. Um, me personally, I don't care, I don't know, I have no way of d saying this, that or the other regarding what happened thousands of years ago. However, my dad taught that he was uh, just in a catatonic state, you know, when, when it's known that like when, when he was, he said it's done, suddenly the thunder and lightning and the storms opened up. So everyone ran home instead of hanging out. So they took him off the cross, put him in this dark cave, and he was like in a catatonic state when the person sort of in a coma. Yeah. Then he woke up and came out. Now, that seems a, sort of a logical thing. That's but then, what your father told you? That's my dad. He used to teach Protestant uh, high, you know, school, and that was his right. belief. Now, yeah. I found a confirmation of that theory in the books of Sylvia Brown, who's a very gifted and well-known published psychic, who her spin on this is that Jesus was um, alive. It's just because, you know, when your spirit, when your ghost, so to speak, when a person dies and then the spirit comes back, they don't come back like they're 80 years old like grandmas. They don't come back like 30, 40 years old and they're fresh. They're not full of wounds and haggards. If they had a, a car accident, they don't come back, you know, as a ghost with their head dripping and blood dripping. They come back sort of as they know, like to be, and the spirit is there. But what Jesus came back, supposedly it was documented that he had wounds. And Doubting Thomas stuck his finger in the wound and said, is that you? He said, yeah, and he stuck his finger in the wound. So for Jesus to walk the earth again as a wounded uh, person, but knowing that he's an outlaw, I better get out of here. Okay, he and Mary Magdalene skipped off. So, you know, it was like, okay, hey, just believe. Spread the love. Spread right. the gospel. But it's still a story. We don't know Magdalene and all that. But you know what? I wasn't going to talk about this, but now that he brought it up, one thing I really trust is you were talking many years ago about a woman you really loved and a huge trauma that you went through. Oh, and yeah. Then you ha Can you talk about that? Because I think now would be the time. That I trust. But that was my personal vision of Christ. That was my communion and my, my con connection with, with the Lord. Maybe never well, heard I, I very much you know that feel story? that Jesus is very with us now because I work with him all the time. Right. Yeah, well, we all so do. We have Christ so, consciousness. Yeah, so, you know, he's alive right now. He, he comes up during psychic surgery and initiations for many people and, and for me. And I was told that when I had my surgery during the cancer, that my surgeon, who was an Iraqi woman, beautiful woman, I had a woman surgeon, which was brilliant, that she, that she would be overshadowed by the Malchizedeks. And I initiate people into the Order of Malchizedek. And Jesus was 33rd degree initiate of the Order of Malchizedek, which is a very ancient healing ministry in this universe. We have many other beings in this universe besides ourselves. And so Jesus and Mary were overshadowing my, my, my medical team during my, during my initiation, which uh, were my two operations over two weeks. And that's what they did in ancient times. You know, we, we, we used to sometimes be cut for rejuvenation. That's how the shamans worked. You used to be cut. What, what is the idea? To shed some blood? Yeah, so when you shed blood. blood when when, when you shed, shed blood, what happens is that, I don't mean in war and in a bad way, but if it's done in a very esoteric, beautiful way, then you are bridging the, the, the boundary between the inner and outer worlds. Right. There is an inner and outer world, and the skin covers that blood and, and there is a there are a lot of encodings in our blood that take us back to our multi-dimensional uh, state you know into our lifetimes in different universes and and way way beyond who we think we are which is just well wait a second dates. blood belongs inside the body not outside and any bloodletting ceremony i think is tend to hate satanism and weird stuff yeah, and i don't know bloodletting and leeches and things that's how they <coughs> healed people I'm not talking about, you know, killing. I'm talking no, no, about doing it very specifically. No, there's a potential here for uh, a lot of mm -hmm. conflict. Yeah. Okay, let's think of there, positive there's, things. There's like when kids no, get no, together and say we're blood leeches, brothers, let's, let's share blood. That's an old kid's way of yeah, bonding. Yeah. Well, let me, some have said that the soul is housed in the blood. So at those rare times, uh, the fortunate or unfortunate, when the blood comes to the surface, it's like the soul coming to the surface too. And you obviously don't want it to happen in the wrong circumstances, That's right. because then That's you right. do have blood and warship. It's very powerful. Bloodshed is usually considered war, but bloodshed 
doesn't always have to be that. You've got the menstrual blood. It can be negative. Well, the menstrual bread is sacred, positive. and we must honor the woman's uh, sacred blood and, and not right. be ashamed the, of it. The letting right. of a woman's blood and that and the power in that blood, the, the healing power in that blood is very, very powerful. Right. And that's what the ancients knew, and that's what we've lost in modern time. And when, when I was uh, menstruating, my mother put me through a ceremony with the old man. I didn't understand it, but now I know that it goes back, back, back to 5,000 years ago. You were raised ago. as a Hindu? Uh, I was raised in Egypt, so I went to mosques, I went in England, oh, I really? went to Sunday school, I oh, went really? to a convent, and I, I'm a Hindu, so I've, I've, right. I've you know, my, my family, we, well, we pray in different places. Hinduism, we don't just pray in a church no, or I'm just in a temple. I pr just for the sake of my viewers yeah. who may not, um, I think Hinduism is one of the most... Um, it comes kind of puzzling religion because it's sometimes not even considered a religion. It is a religion. But I think it's closest to uh, to nature and the elements. That's, That's why true. I think a Hindu can swing into these practices like 24-hour fire ceremonies or whatever. A Hindu can have a space for 33,000 deities or only one. All of We it see is everything is as God in Hinduism. We have a God right. for death we have a god for sex as you know right we have a god for everything in india <laughs> probably the so, cow dung you know is <laughs> yes the, the cow yes. dung the shit you know right the cow dung everything is, sacred. is sacred, yes. is sacred. Yes. that's yes, what yes. like the native american traditional ways they see medicines in the spider and the bird the coyote that's everything right. in life is sacred right and so let, let's talk though about your your cancer what was that like how old were you what what talk about your process well um i was um uh, zipping around all over the planet, teaching and initiating people into high, very high energy and treat, teaching preventative medicine. And I thought I was very humble and, uh, you know, but somehow I hadn't understood physical, uh, you know, I'd understood emotional body healing through having heartbreak and I understood physical healing through leaving a very rich man and homes and servants and all that. And I understood mental healing through leaving behind my father's intellectual aspects into moving into a higher paradigm. But I hadn't understood the physical because I'd never been ill. I was very strong and I'm, I'm very powerful. I'd helped many people through channeling to transmute cancer and have amazing miracles happen through advanced sound wave energy therapy and psychic surgery. And I went to see a numerologist and uh, I said, uh, she said, you're, you're going to be enlightened in this lifetime. I said, great, I, you know, I think all of us are. And she said, uh, there's time now for purification next year. So I came back to Babaji, and I, who I channel, and I said, Babaji, step it up now and give it to me as hard and as fast as you can. And why wait for next year for the spiritual purification? Within two weeks of that, I went to see my surgeon, and they said that I had cancer. I, I Your saw, surgeon? Why would you have a surgeon? Uh, I went to see, because I had a lump, and so you go and see the doctors. Ah. And the doctor, the, 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 the same doctor who analyzes what you've got, is the one who, you know, but it wasn't that guy, it was a woman I had in the end. And where was the lump? And the, the lump was in my breast. I had fibrocystic breasts and there was a very big uh, history of cancer in my family. But being a healer, I had dissolved these fibrocystic breasts years ago through meditation. And so after a while I thought, why pay uh, a private surgeon 18 pounds, you know, just to have a little fiddle on my breast every six months. And I stopped. A little fiddle on your breast uh, yeah, every six months. Yeah, so I, I, I stopped going. and. Uh, Carly, Carly Manol had this thing and I watched it on TV and I was teaching in Portugal, a very powerful healer teacher and I felt I felt a lot of pain in my heart for humanity because I felt there's all these amazing teachers out there but I... Um, So, so I'm saying, can we not embrace that in yeah. this case with the 9-11? That's all I'm asking. Yes, yes. That is beautiful. The bridging of everything is beautiful. The dark plays a, a role in the light. Hitler taught us something. 9-11 has taught us something. The dark also has its role. Ultimately, all that is encompasses also the shadow. Whenever you have a large light, you are going to have a large shadow. So let's not judge the shadow, as you said very beautifully, 
The shadow is not real. The fear is not real. Death is not real. We all have to die. That's relative reality. Birth, death, birth, death, birth, death. Many lifetimes, many recalls, many places. But the truth is the soul is never dead. It never dies. That's in the Bhagavad Gita. Right. That's in our ancient Vedas. That's what the great mystics that have meditated and, and really studied uh, metaphysics have but, understood. But and we are now bridging. Phys 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 physics is now being bridged with metaphysics. I'm getting calls from scientists that have been my students from all over the world that are saying, we're physicists and we want to talk about how tall. Good. Tell us about and Egyptian God, mystery right. school. So I think we have, we're running out of time. I want to change today. Oh, you changed the tapes. Oh, but but, wow, but like your father was murdered, you want justice for that murder and that servant who killed them. No, so, so no, 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 no. Yeah. My father was killed. Alan, can you fix your camera? As far as I'm concerned, on a higher level, he chose to exit at that point. As far as I'm concerned, in another lifetime, he also killed this guy who killed him. On another level, he didn't want to die watching television and reading his newspaper, and the guy hit him on the head. He didn't have hours and days in hospital, etc. He had a full life, and he wanted to go. Maybe not, he didn't say, I want to go, but I spoke to him two weeks before he died. I said, what do you think about death? He said, darling, I've had the love of my beautiful family, of presidents, kings, taxi drivers. I've done it all. I've had great respect. If I drop dead tomorrow, great. So be it. You know, no problem. But I want to live, and if I live, good, and if I die, good. That's what we understand as Hindus. That life is, you know, you keep saying so many people died in Burma. It is sad, but the purification of this earth is going to happen now. And as Babaji says, it's called Mahakranti. You know, it has happened many times before. It happens many times again. And as we sow, so shall we reap. But there we is, but Jesus the, taught the, us the most powerful thing is that as we sow, so shall we reap. But if we atone and if we understand, then there is redemption through the, the wonderful power of grace. And let us bring grace into the lives of each other. Let us bring grace into the world. Let us forgive the CIA or the people or whoever it is, our governments, that they've done the best they can. And we have created our governments. And to say them and us is rubbish because at the end of the day, every finger that we point at anybody else is us. There is unity consciousness. There is just one consciousness that has become planets and stones and Bush and Hitler and Mother Teresa and Diana. And we can just forgive, come into the now, and change the future paradigm because what we focus on is what we get. If we keep focusing on war, that's what we will keep getting. And I'm not saying that it's not good to uh, discriminate and research and whatever, but ultimately we need to come to grace. I don't know if you agree with that. That's a beautiful that. wisdom. The, my research helps to understand that. And okay, so, so we come that, to grace, we'll come to grace and, and forgiveness. But meanwhile, we have criminal sociopaths in the White House advocating more. Let's send them love, let's send them light. Let's send, meanwhile, let's oppose them in their policies. Let's oppose them in our actions. But let's, in our hearts, see that they, are, uh, they and us are one. And, and, and as Jesus said, Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. That doesn't mean allow them to do it. That doesn't mean don't take action against it. And that doesn't mean that Jesus didn't think that eventually they would know what they're doing. Exactly. I think we should and he took the, the whip. For that. And he took the whip and he hit the people in the gambling houses as well. He yeah. took action. The synagogues. He said, yeah. not it's my a balance. Room, not in the house. The yeah. balance between the right and the left, the male and the female, <laughs> the doing and the being. The fighting, but saying, okay, at the last minute, look, I fought you, Frank, but you're me, darling. And whatever I'm saying to you is about myself. If I say you're beautiful, I'm saying I'm beautiful. If I say you're foolish, I'm saying I'm foolish, because you and I are one. Wow, I think uh, that's... That's very enlightening. Very beautiful. <laughs> I think I would really like to end on that note. Okay. Unless you have more to say. Well, it's, there's an endless spin, but yeah, it's all we are all one. That's obvious. The universe spins and cycles. Time always, you know, revolves and orbits, and history repeats itself. And basically, everyone's praying for peace and freedom and 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 finding love in their life. And it's basically whatever language you speak, whatever period of history we've lived in or civilization, we're seeking the same thing. So, Babaji yeah, God says, it. Babaji says, truth, love, simplicity. Wherever we're getting complex, let's make it simple. Love binds, it doesn't ultimately divide. And the truth, well, well, there's always a bigger picture of the truth, you know. And let's honor each other's truths, even if we differ in our truths of each other. So beautiful. Well, thank you. Thank you, Rashmi, thank for you. coming here to New York for these seven days and, and uh, being with Frank. Frank, thank you for bringing her here. And <laughs> I'm looking forward to doing the live show with you tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow night we're going up live.
Nine thirty to ten, channel thirty four. What's alien healing in America? And we're just gonna have fun. fun. So Usually, I talk show. about alien and other well, well, healing. Will Resh may be with us. Yeah, yes. of course. Right, right. A lot of people who have an artist, Orrin Buck, who has very interesting video art right. and just a uh, goof off and have right. some fun. Maybe we'll have web fairs. Anyone's yeah, welcome. It's yeah. an open I'm forum, yeah. live call-in uh, program that's open, be yeah. open on the airwaves. Yeah. And we're, we're celebrating the fact we're alive. Right. I'll have my so guitar. So we, we love we'll make each music. other, don't we? Of course. Oh, yeah. We all love each other. Thank you for joining me. My name is Paula Gloria, and this and has been an excursion farther down. And I, and I wish, uh, Nico, love, too. I wish all everybody, Les and Luke, may they heal their love. May we all yes. come together, everybody. Yes. We, we're all about love and truth, and however we interpret it or misinterpret it, let's just try to forgive each other and communicate and listen to right. each other and give everyone a time of day without anger, and then we'll come to a common consensus. Beautiful. Good, bad, or indifferent, mm. we have to find the truth in the best ways by... Om, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace within, peace without, peace to all beings everywhere. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Look what's on screen. Look at. Look what he put. <laughs> he was flashing you, on Alan. that, but you, you were talking. Where did you get that picture? That's from my. He found well, it from. Well, the every website. time you, you were speaking, that was uh, that was what was on screen. <laughs> that's not on my website. Thanks for changing the tapes. Well, that's what we did. Though. Alan is connected to Babaji too. Wow, he found a nicer picture of Babaji. Yes, Babaji. See, that's a picture I came with. So, what do you think, Alan? About. We went. Do to, you want to do we a went show? All over the show. No, I'm tired. You're no, tired. Covered a lot. We certainly did. What, yes. well, how do you think yeah. it went? Didn't we go to all over the show? No, it makes it good television. It does. Really? Yes, it makes it interesting <laughs> <laughs> conversation. No, the people like that. People like to see controversy. Okay. Screaming and shouting. Mayor Baba said people shout because they're very far from each other. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're very passionate. <laughs> they're very far away mm. in, in position yeah. from each other, so they have to shout. I'm sure for reinvestigating the murder of Dan Wallace. no place for that. Well, I would like to say... Henry. And so peace, because she says, I'm not going back there. That's a loony bin, and it's dangerous. And instead of winning someone over who could has the respect of the fire but department Frank, and the police department, Frank, you, he Frank, and uh, that whole explosion blew off that possibility of an avenue of a forum. I bet you if she... Excuse me, I don't start use vulgarity and start call out a turn. And when I had that, the 9-11 Truth, I had Peace, who was a masseuse for, for the fire department, and the whole 9-11 Truth was new to her, and she works on policemen and, and, and firemen as a, as a healer at the pain management at the Cabrini. And she, I introduced her to 9-11, she was saying, oh, this is great, I'm going to introduce 9-11 Truth to the firemen and the police who are afraid to even go there. And next thing you know, Nico started screaming all kinds of stuff and insulting, calling out a turn and being vulgar, and I helped to escort him out because I'm saying, please, this we're trying to have a, a forum here, and if you have some merciful but as we speak people are dying every day in Iraq and Afghanistan through a war of aggression that's because illegal of that, because of that we, d we no do because what there said. are criminal sociopaths in the White House and the Pentagon that are perpetrating I'm war saying, and promulgating a false I'm illusion just, that war is real just, and war is not real I'm especially trying, it I'm doesn't trying, belong in this Frank, new world Frank, I'm everything that's Frank emotional came, and anger and upset is, is illusion Frank came but to reality England twice. is love he crossed the Atlantic twice this year in the last four months to come and see me and, uh, well, you know, I had other things to do too, but of course <laughs> I went to see you. Why not? And and he met, you know, people that I love, and and we shared together, and we, you know, planted trees together, and he understood about Saint Albans and various things, and Findorn. I, I right. recommended he go to Findorn because he's really interested in, in the in the fairies and the understanding right. about plants. First things first. Let's, I agree that there's a lot of questions that have to be answered. Any structural engineer knows that uh, buildings don't disappear within 10 seconds. It's very strange. But so we're dealing. Demolition is, it, whatever it is, it is, it's a crime. But the important thing is that my commitment is not to w this theory, that theory, whatever, but basically to stop these criminals that perpetrated the crime that murdered our friend Celeste Victoria and other people that were murdered that day. But there was an act but of. You Murder but, but, that happened. But, but wouldn't you Who be, did that? Wouldn't you be unhappy if you found and blamed the wrong person? 
I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just saying, what's going on? Well, it seems to me that the, the fish stinks from the top down, you know, that you... you but you don't just lash out randomly. You no, but the air, it, it, where was the air defense let, let, that day? Okay. Why wasn't our government defending ourselves? Who you know why? The, if there were no planes, you wouldn't need any air defense. That's why. Well, there, the, the, the controversy, what I was showing you, was saying that America went to war over cartoons. That's right. And this woman, six, seven years ago, saw this and was essentially put into a mental hospital rather than have this truth come out. As soon as she expressed it on the internet, horrible reactions happened, and she knew she must have been on to something to get some type of horrible reaction. Now, I know you're, and being from India, you can sort of weather through and understand things that I think a lot of Americans that are only kind of raised on a television world, we don't have that capacity. Like I'm When sure I saw it uh, on TV, when it was happening, I just knew immediately, psychically, that it was, um, you know, what you've, you've been researching since. You mean you knew that no airplane went into the building? I said, this has been done by the, uh, the CIA. Well, that was my, f and I was watching it. Yeah. But I didn't even think about it. I just looked at it boom. and I said, They have a bombing agenda in Afghanistan, a bombing agenda in Iraq, but you know, and so they do their bombs. Rashmi, we... We and even then have to be careful when we talk about CIA because we don't even know who that is. I don't think there's anything wrong with having By that I meant, I meant that the, it was okay. constructed, it was a construct within the American system, actually, not outside of it. Actually, the television fakery doesn't point inside. It points oh, outside. Really? Inside. Yeah. That's why I'm saying I want to work with people like you more strong who's actually gone through something like you have with chemo where you work with both both positions so that you're not uh, rigid Biased, to say yeah. that it has to be this yeah. way or it has no, to be that no. way. No, and, 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 and I, I could have been, what I was saying was that what I was seeing wasn't what I was saying. I know what my mic, my mother, Yeah, we know it wasn't 19 what, what hijackers mother, and, and I knew that these what, what my mother said so what? from my brother, she told me, uh, she, my brother told me that my mother said that when she saw it, she said it was like looking at a cartoon. Yeah. But she didn't say anything to people out of respect for the deaths that had happened. Okay, but, but the bottom but line is we have to get to the perpetrators of this crime and stop this before it happens again in another 9-11. There's some malf malfeasance, some kind of malicious agenda that's out there that's cheerleading war. It was in Virginia where you met. Yeah, Virginia. Right. Where he has a center, rebirthing, what's, right. what's the website? I came into the kitchen and uh, I was about to have breakfast and I was still in my night clothes because I'd been with the fire all. And suddenly I was on television talking about rebirthing and spiritual purification and Frank was behind the camera and then I did some ceremonies and some healing and I gave him some sound wave energy therapy and we did some singing and dancing. And we had a great time, and uh, he invited me to New York to come and do more shows and, right. and, and share what I had to share, and he shared what he had to share, which was wonderful. Well, I know that Frank has a very nice fire ceremony. You're a really good facilitator, and you recently went to Scotland, didn't you? To right, right. I set up what I call a medicine wheel. Every full moon I'm uh, devoted this year to be doing medicine wheels, which is like energy vortexes, because everywhere on planet Earth is sacred. We honor Mother Earth, and we're learning as human beings to respect Mother Earth and go back to the... We design our body but before we come into our incarnation. That's what I felt. But anyways, it was interesting. And then I, you know, then Babaji got me to meet uh, Leonard, and I went on this wonderful journey all over the world where Leonard introduced me on stages as the great spiritual princess and da-da-da, you know, of great aristocracy of India. And I was just like, whatever, you know, I'm just here... <laughs> Here, just as a channel and a servant of Babaji's, and and you know, let's that's a, a Frankism, whatever. I'm getting mm -hmm. American now. So <laughs> Babaji very much wanted me to come to the states and work with America now because America is going to go through a huge wake-up cycle. But we don't live American, in a democracy the here. American people this country are now pretends really, to be democratic. The, the American people are really wanting to reinstate the Native American ways and so on. I feel mm. that the, the people themselves really want to change now. Yeah. They want to go back to the family units and some of the beautiful things that we have in India that we're losing because we're following the West. And so the India is becoming like America, and Americans and, and English people want to, to follow the East. And I, th I see a vision where the two come together. Well, you certainly embody that in your, in your genealogy, right? You're, and, you're and from a family, a political family that, that, that's worked both with India and with Britain. The West, the yeah. Because my father was invited by the 
uh, Rosalind Carter and uh, you know to the White House and uh, yeah. he very much believed in so a socialist Any aspect. Any time they they also tried to kill your mother? No, no. The servant left my mother and father for dead. My mother is a superwoman. She has wow. past incarnations as a Mongolian chieftain warrior. And she's so into four Ayurvedic days, uh, four days after she was left for dead, with, hit on a st with a stone in her bed, after four days she was found by the police uh, by the postman, and she survived four days of no food, total bloodletting, and 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 she had no um, plastic surgery. She had uh, no mental illness, even though she was hit with a grinding stone on the head. The, the bed took the impact. And, oh and when my father was hit with a pressure cooker, and the guy who oh killed God, them... India is such a country the, drama. I mean, and no, you, but this happens all over the world. The, this, the, the, the yeah. murder happens uh, in America. Right. <laughs> no, but somebody to be left for four days to come back like that. that this that's happens pretty, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, miracles happen all the time. People can have an accident in the car, and the car rolls around, and the person can walk out. Because we're living in a hologram. We're living in, a, in an illusion, what the Indians call Maya illusion. This third dimensional reality is reality, but our soul sort of has a contract with life. And sometimes, even though accidents happen, we can slip out of it. Or maybe normally healthy, young, great, vibrant you people suddenly mom. can be dead. All, for some reason, the spirit right. leaves the body. The this is a very great mystery, as the Lakota call it, the Wakatanka. He's is right. the great Waka mystery. Tonka, that's like that's that. correct. The great mystery. My mother was singing to an audience of 2,000 people within two weeks of this tragedy. She was wow. on stage and she was singing and making people laugh. In hospital, we had people from all over the world. Rajiv Gandhi said, find the culprits. He was found within three days. He was a normal, sweet servant. He just got sexually, uh, he, he just fell in love with a prostitute and he wanted to steal the money. And, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he, I begged for forgiveness. I went and met him in, in, in jail. I, he was there, I asked, and I felt total forgiveness of him. As right. soon as I met him, that was the grace of Jesus and God to me, that I felt 100% forgiveness and I felt very worried about his family because he was going to be in jail for 20 years. He was 24 years old. And he loved my father. And that, he loved spent, my father that's dearly. what you said, the grace of Jesus, forgiveness. You see, that's true. remember when the Lord was arrested and the Romans came to get him, and the apostle takes a knife out and slices the ear off. He says, don't do that. And he puts the ear back on the Roman, his enemy, who's arresting him. And as they're torturing him, he says, forgive them. They know not what to do. So the, the Lord Jesus is all about love and forgiveness and complete connection that we're all one. And there's no reason to vilify someone or, you it's know. one point. Yeah, you know, say, oh, point your fingers at someone, say they're separate, they're bad, they're enemy. My brothers and sisters in Iraq are not my enemy. Even terrorists who burn the flag, the American flag, and say death to America, I want to learn Arabic and say, hey, guys, what's going on? I speak I, Arabic. I, I, used to I, I don't want to, I don't feel there is an enemy. And if a person has a... Frank and I have a, uh, an incredible soulmate relationship, and it's all about um, amalgamating the inner and the outer. You know, he's out there, and he's speaking a lot, you know, on the street. And doing things, and whereas I've been very much, you know, dealing with certain very specific powerful healers, so that they amplify the energy all over the planet through initiation, and so now it's all about me coming out and you know being on stage more, and having the the, the courage to speak out the truth more because the, the, the energy, truth of healing. the the truth of yeah, the higher truth, the truth is always reaching a bigger picture of the truth you know right. we think okay I'm just this or I'm just a Pleiadian I'm just a Syrian no I'm just part of this universe no I'm part of um, you know and, and then you go into the great mystery which is the void the unmanifest and I think I've been dealing with the unmanifest and, and, and Frank is the male aspect you know he's out there he's doing I'm the feminine aspect and I'm just coming into my in my male aspect through him and I think he's coming into his female aspect through me and that doesn't mean we both don't have both but I'm helping him to, you know, Kali on him, and I can be a scary little chick Well, I sometimes. wipe myself out, too. And I don't, I don't tell other, you something that I don't other. feel for myself. I completely reinvent myself a lot. I've been a playwright, an actor. I was a model, an actor, a star in Spain. I've done lots of stuff. Walked the red carpet on con many times. Equal, and darling. suddenly, all that's over. I could just be a waiter or just okay, be a brand new person. Me, and me, life begins anew. No, and when we begin anew, we have okay. complete... Uh, a sense of mastery where I don't feel that I have to play the game like a, an outflow and an inflow there's yin yin yang so we have different orientation that's yes, the difference but the outflow you don't the want to waste that energy the committed woman, energy with one person is very different yeah but you know what I don't even want to go there yeah, I want to do exactly. easy things like the World Trade Center <laughs> okay relative relative to this issue is, that's what, is what I mean let me let me tell you the lay of the land here right now Frank has been a very uh, 
committed helper in the 9-11 truth movement. And the person who you just saw the explosion with is someone who's been doing some research that initially I was even warned against learning about. And I'll tell you why. Uh, it's because what Frank is faithful to is actually a distraction of what really happened.